This is the third video in our series on factoring trinomials. In this video, we're going to do some harder examples factoring trinomials that are a little bit trickier. When you're factoring trinomials, most of the difficulty actually just comes from the fact arithmetic gets a little bad, but uh, the process itself stays pretty much the same. So in our first example, we're going to look at the polynomial 10x squared minus 19x plus six. Using the AC method, we take the first term and the last term here, this the coefficient, so 10 and positive six. We multiply them together to get 60. And now we need to write down every possible pair of factors to the number 60. As we've done before, one and 60 work. Two also works, 60 divided by two gives 30. 60 divided by three works and gives 20. 60 divided by four works, which gives 15. 60 divided by five works with 12. 60 divided by 6, that works with 10. 60 divided by 7 doesn't work. 60 divided by 8 doesn't work. 60 divided by 9 doesn't work. And then 10 is already listed. So we have the complete set of factors of 60. In this case, the number up here is positive. So these pairs of factors have to have the same sign, either both positive or both negative. And what we're looking for is a pair of factors that adds to negative 19, this middle number here. So take a second and see if you can figure out from this which pair of factors are the ones that we're looking for. If you said negative 15 and negative 4, you're right. Now, negative 15 and negative 4 multiply together to give positive 60 but add together to give negative 19. So that's what we're looking for right there. So we're gonna replace our negative 19 X with these two guys here with an X on them. So we'll have 10 X squared minus four X minus 15 X plus six. At this point, we know it factors by grouping. So we'll group the first two terms together. We wanna to group the second two terms. And like we've done a couple of times before, if there's a minus in front, you have to switch it to a plus negative and then group. So we have a negative 15 X plus six inside. We look at this pair of factors here and we notice they both have an X and they both have a two. So we'll pull out a two X from there. And what we end up with, if we take 10 X squared and divide by two X, we get 5x. And if we take negative 4x and divide by 2x, we get negative 2. And then to do the second one here, we notice that they both have a factor of 3 in the coefficients, but we need the first turn to be positive, so it'll match this one. So we'll take out a negative 3. So we get minus 3. If negative 15x divided by negative 3 is 5x, and 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. And so once again, we see that we have the same terms here. We factor those out, and we get 5x minus 2 times 2x minus 3. And that's the factored form. So again, the challenge here is just the fact that the arithmetic gets a little bit trickier, but the process is identical every single time. One thing I'll mention here, you'll notice that of course I picked negative four and negative 15, I ordered them this way. In fact, it actually doesn't matter which order you put them in, you can swap the order and put the negative 15 X first and the negative four. What that'll do is when you get down to this step, it'll swap which factor is here. So instead of the 5x minus 2 being the common factor, you'll end up with the 2x minus 3 being the common factor and having a 5x and a minus 2 out on the outside. So it doesn't matter which order you put those in. Our last example is a bit of a whopper here, but again, mainly because of the arithmetic. It's 144x squared plus 78x minus 42. So it looks a little gross. The numbers are really big, but if you notice at the beginning that all three of these are divisible by six, we can factor a six out to start. Things get a little simpler right away. If we factor a six out, we get 24 X squared plus 13 X minus seven. Now we can apply the AC method to the terms inside. And it does get a little messy here, but 24 times negative seven is negative 168. We need to find the factors of this guy. And we have a method to do that, that we can count on. So we start by counting one and 168, that works. Two works with 84. And by the way, when you do this, it's okay to use a calculator to do these divisions out so you can see what you get. Uh, if you do three, you get 56. Four works with uh, 42. Five doesn't work. It's not divisible by five because it doesn't end in a five or a zero. Uh, six works and you get 28. Seven works with 24. Eight works with 21. Nine doesn't work. 10 doesn't work. 11 doesn't work, but 12 works 
with 14. 13 doesn't work and 14 is already listed so we have the complete list of possible pairs of factors of 168. Now this is where the sign comes in again because these guys have to have opposite signs because we really need them to multiply to negative 168. And we're looking for the pair of these, keeping in mind they have to have opposite signs, that add to positive 13. So if you take a look here, see if you can find the one that adds to positive 13, where one of these is positive and one of them is negative. If you found negative 8 and 21, you're right, that'll add up to positive 13. So we're gonna rewrite our 13x in terms of negative eight and 21. We need to keep our six out here because it didn't go anywhere. We have 24x squared minus eight x plus 21x minus seven. And at this point, we're gonna factor by grouping. So we group these first two guys. We have a plus in the middle here, so we can ignore that sign and just group there without worrying about any sign changes. And then over here, we look at what they have in common. We see it has an X and an eight. We'll keep our six out here, but we get an eight X out of this. And when we do that, 24 X squared divided by eight X is three X. Negative eight X divided by eight X is minus one. Over here, we notice that they have a seven in common and the first term's already positive, so we don't have to change anything. So we'll pull out a seven and what's left over, 21 X divided by seven is three X. Negative seven divided by seven is negative one. And so we get that and we look and see that the three X minus one is shared by both of them. So we can factor that out. We'll have the six out in front and then the three X minus one and then the eight X plus seven because this guy divided by that gives me eight X. This guy divided by that gives me the seven. And that right there is the factored form of this particular problem. So ultimately what you wanna look at is that the difficulty for this factoring issue only goes up because the arithmetic kind of gets a little bad. You can combat that a little with a four function calculator, but notice that the rest of what we did is basically the exact same process on all these trinomials. We've gone through at least five different examples now of how to do this process. So that's it for the third episode in our series on factoring trinomials. We have one episode left where we'll talk about why you would actually want to know how to do this and what the point of learning all this is. You can check out that video here, or if you'd like to see a more general fun math video, you can check that out here. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to Scholar Sauce, and we'll see you next time.